Uh, yeah, I don't know. Are you on the new OS too? Because there's also all of this uh, uh, morphing stuff. Oh yeah, patch morphing and everything. Yeah. Actually, do you know how to do that, the patch morphing? Yeah, totally. Um, I think I have a, something set up here. Let's see. This one. Uh, let's see. So if you go into this params, morph, you get all these crazy options. Mm -hmm. um, but what's important is the morph source, which is what changes, what's physically changing the two patches. Okay. Um, so right now it's set to slider, which is kind of my favorite. You can latch it. But kind of cool. And so right now it's doing everything except frequency. If you do all params, it's kind of a little crazy. <laughs> So what's that doing? It's also morphing the frequency. So this is like morphing between patch A and patch B, but okay. not changing the frequency. So it's oh. keeping the frequency at patch A, which can be a little cleaner when you're when you're morphing between these things. So the frequency doesn't change, but everything else does. Okay. And for for that, okay. you just get this kind of wild in between. And then you end up somewhere quite cool. That is cool, yeah, I like that. And then, yeah, you just get all these combos that are very specific, like just doing the filter, oh, just, sure, doing okay. just doing the envelopes. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's quite deep. Even I feel like I haven't really explored it to its, its fullest, but, but yeah, kind of fun. So then, um, I'm just trying to figure out. So this is the one patch and this is the second patch is that yeah so I think this is the patch we're on and this is the patch we're morphing to so, okay yeah this this sets the bank in the program so we can just oh, morph okay. to something random oh gotcha Ooh, that's cool yeah kind of nice <laughs> yeah and then yeah you can change the morph source which is cool and you can do it over MIDI too so you oh, can like that's cool. you know modulate it um, this one's a good one too, doing it on the value pod, but it's pretty nifty. Oh, wow, huh. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, I don't know. I don't know if there's there's too much I can I can outline on the sequencer, but, uh, but um, what I always do is the, the extra seek params are, are pretty nifty. Okay. Which is um, where you can turn on paraphonic sequencing, and um, sure. you can also set the seek mode. And the length, so you can do 64 steps and and all that good stuff. Okay, and then, that's where you find that. Yeah, and then okay. for paraphonic sequencing, obviously paraphonic has to be on, mm -hmm. and then you turn it on, and then you get these three lanes for the individual notes. Okay. Um, yeah, and then you can record three note three note things. Oh wow! Okay. I think, but we gotta have our. <laughs> Oh my god, that sounds really bad. That's the default, uh... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's funny that it didn't, uh... Let's see. Did I have paraphonic sequencing on? Let's see. Extended, paraseq on, yeah. Hmm. I wonder if I'm actually triggering... You know what? That's funny. Uh-huh, we were doing... We must have been doing some testing and there's a... Oh, okay. Doing a MIDI feedback loop, so I think that's so funny. Uh, I just need to do a global reset. Uh, anyway, but yeah, that's how you get into those extra parameters. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah, I can do all sorts of triggering stuff, direction. Right. Um, something that I think I'm not sure what OS this on. This is on one two oh seven. There may be an issue with this, but something that is kind of cool is that you can hold the step and then you can set the value here. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, let's see if that's actually working. Which is kind of like a quick way to edit. Let me just see. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like a quick way to edit. So basically then when you hold it, it's uh, just uh, velocity in the note number. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Steps off. 